Hey everyone, it's Rob from Hype Hop and welcome back to another video. In this one, we're taking a closer look at the Zenjour Passport 3 Travel Adapter. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this. Hit the notification bell to be updated of any new content we release. Leave a like on the video if it's helped you. Feel free to leave down in the comments section below your thoughts on the Zenjour Passport 3. Follow us on social media, links are down below, and visit our website, hypop.com.au. Let's get into it. So we've got with us the Zenjour Passport Travel Adapter. So this review is gonna be slightly different. It's not really a photography piece of equipment, but it definitely is an accessory that is useful to photographers. So this one here, full disclosure, has been sent to us for review. However, they haven't expressed to us any you know, opinions or anything that we need to state in, a, in our review. So this is completely gonna be our opinion about this travel adapter here. They've sent with us here the hot pink version of the Passport uh, travel adapter, and it's their latest model. This is the third version of this travel adapter. Now, this travel adapter here is uh, really a useful piece of equipment, especially for photographers. And the main reason being that it's an international travel adapter that's accepted in about 200 plus countries. And if you look at the front here, it takes in uh, pretty much, uh, you know, all sorts of international plugs, including uh, the UK plugs, EU plugs, US plugs and Asia plugs as well, including Oceania, uh, such as Australia and New Zealand. So on the back here, you have three sliders uh, that control the back prongs of the adapter. Firstly, you have here at the top, you've got the straight pin for the US as well as China, I believe, and some other countries that have that. But the nifty feature here for Australian and Oceania uh, users is that you can actually angle these plugs here to suit our PowerPoints. Uh, so that's perfect as well. Uh, it's a nifty feature that I haven't seen in any other travel adapters that I've used. Usually there's a fourth option here for you know Australian plugs. So that's good to see. Now you also have UK three prongs here. And lastly is just the circular straight prongs here, which is for EU and other parts of Asia also. So you've pretty much got most countries covered in terms of a travel adapter. Now on the side here, you do have a USB-C uh, port here that actually provides 61 watts of uh, power delivery. So that means you can charge tablets or laptops also. So if you're on the go and you're shooting on the go, especially while traveling, it's perfect to charge as well as charging all other devices that you need to. And on the side here, you have three a uh, USB-C port and a USB type A port. Now these ports here, they support up to 15 watts of power. Uh, so that seems like it's probably not enough in terms of output uh, or power that it's supplying across those ports, but it does make sense for the size, the compact size and nature of this adapter here. So it's more than enough. If you think about it, you'll be charging a laptop device here and then perhaps some smaller devices that don't require as much power. So something like your smartphone, maybe your AirPods or some headphones, or maybe some batteries for your camera. Um, and also you have access to that USB type A also. From a photographer's perspective, especially if you're traveling around, uh, regardless if it's international or domestically, it's great to just chuck this into your bag so you're able to you know, charge all your devices without having to worry if that's gonna be uh, you know, an issue for you when you land there. So really it's an all-in-one compact travel adapter that you won't be worrying to, you know, to have any other adapters in your bag, just have this one unit and it should cover most things. Now it does have GAN plus technology, so that means it does, uh, the, the energy does pass through the adapter a lot more efficiently than standard travel adapters. And it also does have an auto resetting fuse feature. So that's really handy because I have had some travel adapters in the past with a removable fuse. So usually the, the uh, two volt five amp fuses um, that you have to remove to, um, to replace if they do blow. And it does get quite inconvenient, especially having to make sure that you have some spares with you if you are traveling and you do overload the actual adapter itself. Um, then that does become a little bit of a hassle. Now, this light, uh, this, this travel adapter itself basically allows a full 2,500 watt load on the actual adapter, which is great 
Um, it's actually quite a, quite a lot, which we'll put to the test actually with a few studio lights that you can see to see if it actually does support the load that it specifies. So just as a quick test here to put the Passport 3 through its paces, we actually have a 600 watt flash here. So it's not really nearing to that 2,500 watt load that the Passport 3 claims to have. However, it is a high powered flash, which in most cases as photographers, we would use some sort of power surge protector or we'd have some sort of protection there to ensure that it doesn't you know, uh, have a fault while, while in operation. So here we have the Godox DP600 Mark III and we're just gonna pop that and I'll just take off the uh, little cover over here. So we'll just turn this on over here and we've actually plugged this into the Passport 3. Now, there are a few ways you can go about this. So if you did travel with this unit overseas, you could obviously get a kettle cord that is specific to the country you're going to. So this one here is obviously an Australian one. We have it plugged into an Australian adapter, but instead of passing through, or connecting directly into the uh, PowerPoint, we've passed it through the Zendure Passport to see if there's any issues with the auto resetting fuse, and if it will be able to handle the 600 watt flashes that this one here, this flash can produce. So. Um, so right now I've only got it on uh, 1 over 64, so if we pump that all the way up to its full output at 600 watts, this has a recycle time of approximately uh, one second or so, so it does have a fast recycle time. Uh, so let's just fire off a few flashes to see if we encounter any issues. So you can see there, I fired off about 10 flashes or so. It doesn't seem to be tripping up whatsoever. So yeah, I think that uh, it's safe to say that the Zendure Passport 3 is suitable for photographers for most use cases. Now you won't really be using a 2,500 watt flash. You know, the largest uh, output flashes usually are about those 1,200 watts. So in most cases, it should cover everything from uh, photography equipment and lighting up to your devices that you shoot or edit with, including your tablets and your laptops, as well as all your smartphones, battery chargers, headphones, anything that a content creator needs. So that was just a quick look at the Zendure Passport 3 from a photographer's perspective. So it's a great travel adapter if you're traveling around internationally, domestically, and you want a single travel adapter that you don't have to worry about, uh, that you take along with you, has a small compact size, covers up to 200 plus countries, has that GAN feature, so it's got efficient power uh, throughout the unit. It also supports uh, many different devices as well as photography equipment. This is the one to look at. So for more videos just like this, don't forget forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be updated of any new content we release, leave a like on the video if it's helped you, feel free to leave down in the comments section below your thoughts of the uh, Zendure Passport 3, follow us on social media, the links are down below, and visit our website, highpop.com.au. Thanks for watching.